Hey everyone, it's Johnny Morgan and I'm back with a video and today we're going to go into the Roland Director S sequencer software package for the S550. Um, it's quirky, it's old, it's super 80s, very rare, not a lot of people used it. It's in fact really quite difficult to use so I am not surprised but we're going to go into it today. We're going to load up some, um, some sounds on different MIDI channels and we're going to uh, sequence some patterns and put together a song and I'm going to show you how to use Director S for the S550. So stay tuned, let's get into it. Before we get going let's just go into a bit of background on Director S. Um, Director S came out in 1987 and it was a sequencer package for the Roland S series samplers and at that time I believe it was the S50 and then the S550 and then the S330 that they had Director S sequencer software for. The S550 uh, was more popular than the S50 obviously because it um, the S550 had double the sample memory and it was much easier to manage multi-tumbral sound sets on the S550 and so thus you could load in a lot more sounds and assign them to different MIDI channels and it was much easier uh, layout in the in the system software. Um, so the S550 was perfect um, vehicle to add a sort of Fairlight style uh, sequencer package to it and um, that's what Roland decided to make with Director S and it lets you sequence patterns and um, then chain those patterns into a song and um, it seemed quite powerful actually there's a lot of um, micro editing features and things that you can do with the sequencer so we're going to get into that and just explore Director S. Okay here we are with the Director S software loading into the S50 sampler and as you can see I'm loading in and off floppy um, and it's a uh, I downloaded the, the Director S stuff from um, the internet and I formatted the floppies for it. I haven't actually figured out how to get Director S to load off the hard disk yet because I'm not really sure how to load the hard disk uh, OS and the Director S OS um, simultaneously. They seem to work against each other a little bit. Here, as you can see, here it's loaded and it's pretty basic. We have a blank slate and uh, you can see it's in sort of the song play mode as soon as it loads up and we don't have anything in here it's just a blank song so it's pretty basic um, but uh, the one thing about this is you definitely need the mouse uh, to run director s i can't imagine you doing it any other way you just have to be able to move around these menus pretty quickly and mode is kind of the main menu item where you have all the functionality of the of the um, menu in there so you've got your play menu your edit menu your disc menu and all the way down to your pattern and song menu the pattern and song menus are, are the ones where all the action happens so um, I'm not going to go into too much detail but this is the play mode here so when you're playing back a song you can watch all the MIDI channels light up and see all the sounds playing on each MIDI channel um, as you can see and then uh, edit mode is just for editing the individual um, MIDI channel um, instruments so if you want to change those and do some editing to those instruments. Um, disk is just your disk I.O. functionality and some tuning, your MIDI um, settings and then um, down here you've got your pattern um, window and this is where all the work is done where you actually create the patterns that you're going to actually put into your song. You can see all the MIDI channels here actually if you hit right click I think this yeah you get all the way down to 16 um, so you can for each pattern you can have up to 16 MIDI channels, 16 instruments playing uh, different sounds and that's really awesome. You can set your tempo, uh, put quantization on and off, um, turn on the metronome which is super handy when you're actually playing the notes in and um, it kind of does a pattern loop mode so you sort of start you start writing over yourself uh, when you create the patterns. We'll check that out later um, and then in the other mode um, in song mode is where you actually chain the song together with the various patterns. We'll get into that later too. So yeah, so first thing we want to do is actually go back into disk. Actually we want to just go into menu here and load up some sounds for, um, for us to have to play with. And on Director S they gave us disk 2 and disk 2 actually had the sounds for, um, I'm going to execute that. 
load set one. And it's uh, the sound set for Mr. Slick, a song that came with it, sort of the demo song uh, created by Roland. It's kind of a jazzy, it's a jazzy number, but I'm going to load up Mr. Slick and then that'll put in, um, it's just the sounds for Mr. Slick. So I'm loading them up and they're already pre-assigned to various MIDI channels. We have some drums, uh, some keyboards and stuff on various MIDI channels that we can use to just uh, recreate a song in direct rest. So let that load away here. Okay, that's complete. And we'll go back into, um, let's go back into um, our edit mode here, our mode. Let's just check pattern mode here. Um, play. Yeah, okay, so in play mode, you can see we've got, um, we do have some instruments now loaded up into it. Um, we have like, obviously, um, general MIDI was typically channel, well, channel 10, so it's drums in on A, you know, and then various other instruments are loaded in there. So let's just see what we got. We got some techno drums, slap bass, an organ, guitar, tenor sax, and a trumpet. And so we'll um, use those to create a new song. So let's give it a try. Okay, here we are with the S550 and Director S um, set into pattern mode, and uh, we're down here in pattern mode. And this is kind of where you write all your patterns. And I, I currently have um, my MIDI controller set to MIDI channel 10, uh, which is some drums. As you can see, light up there. It's nice, super 80s sounding drums. And uh, you can set some parameters here. Uh, I like to have the metronome on while I'm recording. And I'm going to quantize it to 16th notes just because it's the 80s and it makes it easy for me. And um, this pattern is actually a four bar pattern. So this size uh, thing here is important. So it's actually going to go four bars and it's going to loop back again. So I get to kind of add four bars of drums in and uh, while well, it's looping. So, um, so I'm going to start it up and kick it into record and just let it kind of play a bit. And then I'm going to kick in my drums here when I'm ready. So here we are in record mode. Here we are. You can see it quantized it there for me. My playing was a little sloppy. Here we go. So we've got our uh, basic kick snare pattern into uh, memory there on channel 10. And so let's set the MIDI controller now to, um, to channel 2 and uh, maybe we'll record some bass and see what happens there. Okay, here we are. We're on channel 2. Let's see. Let's see, let's put that octave shift back up. There you go. It's total Seinfeld bass. Let's, uh, let's record that in. So let's start on one and we'll record that in. So um, one. Okay, let's record that. There we go, there's a the bass line. So it has a bit of a industrial feel. Okay, so um, yeah, let's add in an organ or something. So I think that's what we got on channel four. So I'm gonna switch to MIDI channel four here. There we 
here we are. Let's just check. Let's go up and see our channel four. There is channel two. Just recording. Okay, let's jam a bit. See what we got here. Let's record that. Okay, cool. So we got that uh, recorded. So yeah, we got our simple four bar pattern uh, recorded there, which is pretty rad. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go offline here and I'm gonna make a couple more patterns and then uh, I'm gonna start the recording back up and then we'll go into song mode and I'll show you how to chain those all together. Okay, here we are um, and we we're into the last mode here, down here and it's called song write mode. And uh, this is kind of where you do your sequencing and it looks like just a bunch of numbers on the screen but what actually the R is, um, is actually, those are each one of these is a bar in the song. So it actually scrolls along bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and then it wraps around to bar nine, 10, 11, sort of like that. Sorry, my mouse isn't working too well. It's very quick. Um, yeah, so what you wanna do is um, we've made, I would have done is made two four bar patterns and I'm gonna sequence them in order and just show you how to sort of set up a song. So in measure one, uh, we want to put pattern one in. So we're going to insert that. And you can see the four bar pattern now goes uh, in there below um, over bars uh, one, two, three, and four. So then we go to bar five, uh, measure five, sorry. And let's add in pattern two, which is a pattern I just created and insert that. And so now we have pattern one for the first uh, four measures and then pattern two for the next four. And uh, we could audition that and play that right now. Okay, so yeah, we can audition that right now. Let's check it out. And here we go, we'll play that. Whoa, we'll start on five. Let's pack it up to start. Here we go. You can see it scrolling through the measures. Let's go to let's go to measure nine and we'll put pattern one back in. Insert that. And then again, I can add another pattern in there if I want. So there you go. That's kind of how you do uh, pattern sequencing uh, here. Let's play that again. There you go. So that's actually how you sort of start piecing your song together with all your patterns. It's actually not a bad uh, visual interface, um, considering um, that it's basically um, text <laughs> on a screen. So yeah, you know, you can get an idea of how how the patterns are going to piece together in your overall song. And you, I think you can have a pretty large song. You can scroll down here and keep adding bars and bars and bars of uh, music. So um, yeah, so that's kind of the in and outs of Director S. And if you go back to play mode while you're playing instead of song mode, you can actually see all the MIDI channels lighting up here doing their thing. And uh, oh, let's reset that. And uh, it's kind of fun. To be honest, you know, it's a, it's a little bit complex. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I think the key uh, to Director S is kind of setting up uh, your sample library uh, down here with all your your song, your proper sounds in in memory ahead of time, so you have a nice palette to work with, and uh, then you just go at it. And 
uh, create these really crazy 80s, uh, 80s songs on your S550. Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that rundown of Director S. And um, if you really like this, subscribe to my channel. And uh, hopefully I'll just get some more videos on uh, Roland samplers and old vintage gear up for you guys soon. All right, cheers. Thank you.